Hello everyone, no intro today because it's Sunday. Uh, you can get this model from Free3D. I will put a link in the description so you can download it. Uh, you can either open, uh, I think the, f uh, the, the model comes with a, a dot .blend file that you can open directly uh, and work in, or if you want to keep your window layout, you can just append it. That's what I did, you can just append the scene. Um, so this, the scene in itself, what like the animation we're gonna make is not really, it's, it's not complex at all. But there is some uh, tips and tricks that I will be sharing throughout this video that are very interesting. Uh, I think, yeah, the first thing I do here is actually load, uh, load in an HDRI from Polyhaven. And then I uh, add a camera. When you sw I switched first to uh, looking through the x-axis and then I added a camera. That way you have your camera uh, rotated the same way as uh, the plane you were facing. You see, it's faster to set up that way. Control B to add a render region so it doesn't render what's outside of the frame. Uh, I put the strength of the HD right to zero to check if there are no uh, other light sources because I just removed the point lights that were part of the scene. I'm just adjusting the material of the plane. I thought about making something uh, reflective. I want the reflection of the bicycle on the uh, on the floor. I added an area light. Yeah, the, um, this is sped up, this is uh, X2, but I will be, I will try to explain uh, the interesting parts. Yeah, I set, up, uh, I set the specular to 1 and the roughness to 0, metallic as well to 1, so I have a full-on reflection. Uh, this is where I changed the different materials of the model we uploaded. Uh, this is up to you. I will be doing a lot of tweaks here and there. You can. This is totally up to you. You can change the materials however you like. You can choose the colors you like. Uh, as you can see, this model comes with an armature, which we will be using later on to animate uh, the movement of the wheels. I don't use. I don't do rigging or use armatures. Really, I just. Use it here in this tutorial. Uh, I duplicated the area light and I placed it behind the model so it will act as a rim light. Um, yeah, as you can see, there is a ref reflection of the area light on the plane. Uh, in cycles, it's not. There is no easy way to like uh, stop the reflection of the light from going on the plane. You could do this easily with with, uh, with the opacity slider on on other render engines like Octane, for instance. But in Cycles, it's a little less uh, straightforward. Yeah, I'm going to set the the spring to a metallic material so it looks more interesting. We'll make it a little darker. Same for the for these. Uh, I don't know what they are called to be honest. I do, I would need to Google that. Uh, yeah, here is a tip. So if you want to know, um, as you can see in this model, it's it's one single mesh, but there is multiple materials in the same mesh. So if you want to know exactly what material the face is. You just click on it and Blender will automatically select, highlight the material that, that it's using.
Yeah, my, my, my brain likes from time to time. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, I, yeah, I think I will add a second camera uh, because in this scene we will have, uh, we will switch between two cameras. I will have one that's uh, pointed towards the spring side. Uh, if, if you want to point your camera uh, to the same view as your viewport, uh, you, you use Control Alt Numpad Zero. I'm trying to find a good angle. Yeah, so I'm trying to give it the same material as the other one. Um, so what I do here is um, it's it's Shift G. So you select a face that has a different material, and then uh, you press Shift uh, G, and then you can select all the faces that have the same material. It's an easy way to select uh, those faces, and then I apply the the other material on it, so they have a uniform one. Yeah, so that's the shortcut you need to remember: Shift G, Shift G, and then you can select by material. I think I ended up choosing a, a bluish color. A little test render to see how it looks. I think I'll probably add um, uh, a depth of field here. I use an add-on called Photographer, if I if I recall, but I will show you how to do it. You don't need the add-on to like set the focus plane. You can just do it with an empty. I'll do it that way as well, so you can see it's really easy. Yeah, yeah. So you add an empty, and then you move it towards the object of your focus. Uh, and then you go to your camera, depth of field, and the focus object you select your empty you just added. And then you can adjust the f-stop to something you like. If you want the sides to be a lot more blurry. Yeah, I'm just playing, as I said in multiple previous videos, you can play with the lighting until you find something you like. And here I think I wanted to have the uh, edges of the wheels, I wanted, them, I wanted them to be a little darker than the rest. Uh, oh yeah, this is the backdrop or background. I thought about making it uh, like emit light. But then I think I dropped that idea. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really like how it looked. So I think I just chose to keep it a uh, pitch black. Yeah, I think I, I'm. Uh, this is where I move the bike down a little bit. You need to select the armature because it looked like it was not. It wasn't exactly on the ground because of the reflection. I think. I moved the position of the camera a bit to have a more of a top view. It's not really top view. It's just well, moved up a little bit and then rotated to uh, around the y axis. Um, the spread allows you to adjust how sharp the highlights are, so you can do the test yourself, but if uh, the lower the spread, I think, the sharper uh, the edges of the highlight are going to be. Yeah, here I noticed that the, the material of the seat is, is way too glossy, so I think I'll change it. Oh yeah, I, I applied a subdivision uh, surface uh, 
on the um, on the frame so that it looks smoother yeah here I will do the same thing I will select as you can see there is the white part on the seat I want it to have the same material as the top part so I will select I will use the same tip I told you the shift G1 shift G materials and then I will uh, assign it assign to it the same material as the top yeah this looks better yeah I think yeah I do it again I will give uh, the handles a bluish color as well I could have copied the material itself but I chose to do it manually it doesn't matter because we don't see much of the handle anyway yeah you need to go to pose mode if you want to move the armature Uh, you just rotate it it doesn't matter it could be to uh, around the x-axis or you can just rotate it anyhow you want it it will always be constrained uh, on the x-axis I think that's how the armature in the model was made again I don't have uh, any knowledge on uh, rigging or armature so probably find tutorials that explain that better uh, this is where I will add a text behind my uh, model We will do a little animation where the text will be appearing uh, gradually. I was also thinking about writing cycles instead. <laughs> uh, I will give it an emission material. I think it looks cooler. I will disable the glossiness so it, I don't see the reflection on the ground. But when you do it, it will also not emit light on the glossy parts of the model. So that's the trade-off. That's why it doesn't work for the... Yeah, this is where I do the trick. So I add a plane. I will uh, add a shrink wrap modifier on the text. And then I will set the, the uh, target to the plane. So now when I move the plane... Yeah, snap mode, you need to set it to outside. When you move the plane, uh, the, the text will start shrinking uh, on the plane so it's actually a little barbaric but it looks like it's disappearing by the way I made a little mistake on the position of the plane but I will correct that later you'll see yeah I change uh, the font to something that looks a little better in my opinion, you can choose whatever font you want. This one, uh, this specific one is called Louise. All right, uh, before doing the, um, the animation and the keyframes, I will uh, do a little bit of compositing. Notice how when I add the glare node, it also affects the text behind. So I'm trying to look for a method uh, to uh, subtract the text from from the comp the the composite of the glare. This is where we'll use something called crypto mats. So you go to the crypto mats menu and view layer, and then you enable objects, and then you add the crypto mat node. Uh, then you can select the text text if I'm not mistaken by using the eyedropper. But before that, you have to re-render your uh, image so that it takes into account the crypto mat you just added so I will select my text and now you can see it's isolated so now I can use uh, a subtract node to remove the text from the image a difference yeah the difference for subtract is the same uh, I need to swap them I will use the shift s to swap them and then I have the correct one see now the text is not visible and and now I will um, after the output of my difference I will do an, uh, an addition so I will append this image to the one uh, with the text only which means the output of the crypto mat I will first set up my glare how I want and then here I will yeah add and then I will mix the two so now I only have the text but it's not affected by the glare node this this was what I'm I was trying to do I don't use uh, crypto mats a lot but I 
I did some research around how to do it. It's, it's fairly simple. Uh, I will also add a lens distortion, I think. I always do that. It's, it always gives um, a little bit of re it adds a little bit of realism. It's subtle, but it's good. Okay, back to uh, animated now. Uh, yeah, you can enable uh, viewport compositing if you want, real time viewport compositing, but I didn't. I think it's something new that they added in these uh, later versions, 3.4, I think. Okay, so now I'm animating the my shrink wrap plane so that uh, it does the text. So it will show the text appearing gradually. You probably know how to insert keyframes by now, I think. You press I. And then uh, uh, here it's location. Yeah, I think I ended up um, key, uh, animating the focal length as well. I will do uh, some sort of zoom. Yeah, linear interpolation. The animation is uh, 10 seconds long, it's 30 FPS. Uh, you press M to add a marker. I talked about this in one of my previous videos. It allows you to bind a camera to a marker. So you go, you jump to the next marker, you switch cameras, you bind the new camera to that marker, so on and so forth, which allows you to switch uh, between cameras and between markers, like this. Uh, I, I talked about this in uh, a previous video about animation tips. Uh, yes, I animate uh, the movement of the second camera. It will be going up a little, by a little bit. As you can see here, yes. Now I will be animating uh, the uh, the bone. I think it's called the it's called the bone to uh, to have the rotation of the wheels. Uh, as you can see, this is the issue. My plane is going through the the bicycle. I didn't notice it at first, but I, I end up. Uh, I I uh, I will see it uh, afterwards, and uh, correct it. Yeah, this is where I see it. You look at the at the back wheel. You can see a little shading problem there. It's because the plane is clipping through my model. So this is where I where I will move my plane. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I hope you learned something and now I will let you see the final result.